four this morning. So, an established actress and telly face, blah, blah, blah. Then, bingo. In 1964, along comes the great soap and the fun begins. It's a product Nolly believes in from script one, page one. Meg, I believe you run a motel. That must uh, keep you pretty busy. Oh, my goodness, it does, especially when business is like it is the next few weeks. We're booked absolutely solid. And you still find time to do your shopping in the town? Well, I've got to, you see, because I've only got a teenage daughter helping me. My schoolboy son isn't a lot of use, oh, but so. I've got a special do coming up, a wedding, and I'm looking for champagne and lobsters for it, so if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better get Certainly, on. Certainly, I won't keep you. Her judgment is sound. Crossroads runs for 24 years, so let's indulge. Imagine, it's 1972, a weekday. The early evening news signs off and out. You reach for one more slice of bread to mop up the excellent ham, egg and chips that was your laptop tea. You call your mum and your sister into the room. The dog's in front of the fire. Dad's out working on his bike. The ad for battered cod balls fades away. And... Oh, Vince, take this over for me, would you please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Perfect. Crossroads Motel? <laughs> you, Meg. You, right under my very nose. Me, the idea, Midland? You, the centerpiece as a Midland. Jimmy Gudgeon, you're demented. I'm a Scot born and bred in the, over <laughs> the border. It doesn't I'm not matter the where you looking... come from, you've got the quality. Oh, you've come back twice, the woman. Health, I mean. Thought you looked a wee bit peaky before you went away. Yes, well, the menus are fine, thank you, Mrs. Well, thanks. <coughs> no doubt you'll be inspecting the kitchen later, Mrs. Richardson, boosting our morale. Does it need boosting? Oh, there's no limit. Excelsior, excelsior is what I always say. <laughs> patience, Miss Lawton, patience. You can't expect the gods to smile on our little venture straight away. Well, if you ask me, I don't think the gods know we exist. I think Lady Luke's gone into retirement. <laughs> what I want to know is, when do we get our mink coats and our villas in the south of France? And our villas in the south of France. Fantastic. 150 seconds of high-octane UHF. Personal favourite? When Amy panics and repeats the line that's just been said. When do we get our mink coats and our villas in the south of France? And our villas in the south of France. And is this a record? We're halfway through this salute and the motel hasn't caught fire yet. Oh, they were very big on fires. Well, let's face it, with the fumes from the script and the flimsy wooden acting, something had to give. On top of this, you just got the eerie feeling that some people were up to no good. I want to speak to Mrs. Thomas. Have you got an appointment to see her? Appointment? You just tell her George is here. She'll see me, all right. It's like Christmas shopping gets here every year. Uh, no. No, the official bonfire is in the village tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, what? Oh. Sorry, what? Oh, yes, yes. Goodbye. You see, it seems she slipped in some grease, and we think the grease was put there deliberately. Oh, surely not. Mrs. Mortimer, in the last week, I've made a number of complaints about certain behaviours of pattern. What? About certain behaviours of pattern. Chewy, did you just say behaviours of pattern? Behaviours of pattern. Wow. <coughs> what on earth's that? Oh! Something awful's happened. Well, come on, girl. What the lady it? on table seven, she's screaming her head off. But why? This. Oh, no. Who's with her? My mummy's. I'd better go through. Oh, oh, Mrs. Mortimer, before you go, I'd just like to say something. These are dead spiders. They didn't get there of their own accord. They've been placed there. Placed there deliberately. Uh, Shuey, could you angle the spider more towards camera, love? We're not picking it up. Thanks. Uh, okay, loves, uh, everybody outside for the fire scene. Oh, my God! The motel is on fire! Mum! Ah! Hang on, Jill, Jill, come on. Where are you going? I'm not afraid of fire anymore, Betty. Ah! Oh, my God! 
Meg was meant to die in that one, but popped up unsinged on the QE2. Like Miss Whiplash. Stoic just about covers it. Poison, prison, bombs, fires, kidnaps, hauntings, rehearsal. Meg saw them all off with a wry, world-weary smile. That's what people liked about Crossroads. It was Meg. Crossroads became so mad that eventually they really did write Meg off. I turned my back on the motel. My life there is finished. Which is about as sane a decision as reworking one foot in the grave without that silly Meldrew character. It's a high rating program. You're the linchpin of it. Why was it you that had to go? I don't know. I haven't been able to find out. I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm sober and clean and uh, <laughs> quiet living and I learn my lines, uh, you know, and they just suddenly... They... Luckily, Noel Gordon's behaviours of pattern were very different to her screen characters and she took the axing without a trace of fuss or sentiment. Bye. Bye-bye, Nolly. There'll never be another you. Good night. You smell smoke? Who stole my heart away? Who makes me dream all day? Dreams I know can never be true. Seems as though I... No one but you.